Hey everybody! Okay, so we have arrived at our last colligative property that we're going to talk about in this series of videos. And as you can see up here, what we're going to talk about is the colligative property of osmotic pressure. Now, osmotic pressure actually has a, a number of different applications, um, but the basic idea is that you're going to have what's referred to as a semi-permeable membrane. And that means that um, small molecules, like solvent molecules, can pass through the membrane, but the larger solute particles cannot. So it's semi-permeable. Okay? Um, important functions like dialysis actually happen through a process related to osmosis. So this does have um, some real-world applications. To introduce osmotic pressure to you, I actually want to show you a version um, that the book articulates um, on like pages 540 and 541, and it's actually going to be related to this second version of the uh, equation for osmotic pressure. We'll come back to this first version and these diagrams here in just a minute. So the first way to think about osmotic pressure, or the first apparatus we can set up that, um, that shows us osmotic pressure is something called a YouTube, uh, not the video thing that you're watching here now, but an actual YouTube, all right? So a device that kind of looks like this. So it's shaped like a U, as you would expect, okay? And it has the semi-permeable membrane at the bottom of the YouTube. So that red line represents our semi-permeable membrane. And on one side, you're going to have solvent, and I'm representing that by a few blue dots. On the right-hand side, we're also going to have our solvent, but we're going to make the right-hand side a solution. So I'm going to put in some black dots. They kind of look gray here, actually. Some other colored dots to represent solute particles. All right, and what we're going to notice, because again, this is a semi-permeable membrane. So what's going to happen is this YouTube system is going to try to reach equilibrium. So it's got lots of solvent on the one side, uh, our left, and it's got solute particles, a solution, on our right. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a net flow of solvent from left to right. And that's going to cause the level here to go up. So we actually then can measure the osmotic pressure by essentially putting a cap over this side of the U-tube and applying pressure until the flow down here stops. Okay? And that pressure is going to be directly related to the concentration of the solution over here. Think about it, it kind of makes sense. The more concentrated this solution is on the right-hand side of the U-tube, the more water is going to want to flow from left to right. So the osmotic pressure is directly proportional to the concentration we have over here. And so that brings us to this equation up here. Pi equals MRT, molarity, the gas constant, and the temperature. Now it might seem weird that the gas constant makes an appearance here, but we can actually rationalize that a little bit as well. Think about the relative vapor pressures you have over the pure water side of the U-tube and over the solution side of the U-tube, right? We know that the vapor pressure of the solution is always going to be less than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So what that kind of does is that creates a pressure imbalance. So there's more pressure sitting on top of the water over here than there is sitting on top of the solution over here. That pressure differential is sort of the driving force for the solvent to go left to right. And since we're talking about vapor pressures, right, we're talking about gases, so it kind of makes sense that the universal gas constant makes an appearance here, okay? And then temperature uh, shows up because obviously temperature can affect uh, things like vapor pressure as well. So we have here pi, it's not the number pi, pi is just the symbol we use for osmotic pressure, pi equals MRT or as I like to say, osmotic pressure equals Mr. T. Uh, I pity the fool who doesn't understand osmotic pressure. Um, I don't know if you'll get that reference. It's starting to get really dated at this point. Um, all right, so pi equals Mr. T. We have another way of thinking about osmotic pressure, and that's in the setup I'm showing up here. So what I'm showing is an elongated tube at the bottom of which is a bulb, 
and the bulb is covered by, again, a semi-permeable membrane that this time I'm showing in gray. So imagine the bulb is sort of open on the bottom, and we cover it with the semi-permeable membrane. So then we stick the whole bulb apparatus in a solution, okay? And to make this look like a solution, um, or I guess I should take that back, inside the bulb apparatus, that's where our solution lies. So I have water inside the tube here, but I also have solute particles. So I'll put a few gray dots in there to represent solute particles. So again, the water is going to flow from the pure solvent into the solution. And as it does that, you can see we have an initial water level or solution level here, but as water flows into the solution that's in that bulb system, the water level is going to rise, the solution level will rise. And eventually we get to a height difference that I could measure there, which gets us to our other version for osmotic pressure. The osmotic pressure is going to be equal to the density of the solution, that's, that's a rho there, so that's standing for density, times g, which is the same g you've been using in physics class, right, that's the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 um, uh, meters per second squared, and then h here is that height by which the solution level inside that elongated tube has risen. So we have sort of a kind of a chemistry perspective on osmotic pressure, pi equals Mr. T, and we have sort of the physics representation. And these two can be equated to each other. One thing to keep in mind, if we think about the osmotic pressure from this top equation, you have rho, you have g, you have h. As you go through and do a dimensional analysis, you're going to get the osmotic pressure with the units of a uh, kilogram per meter per second squared. Just want to make sure I'm copying this down right. Kilogram per meter per second squared. And that is a particular unit. All of that is equal to a pascal. Remember pascals, right? Pascal is another pressure unit. And we can equate pascals to ATMs. So, and perhaps I'll do this in a sample problem, we can go ahead and we can connect the sort of chemist perspective of osmotic pressure with the physicist perspective of osmotic pressure. And like we uh, showed with the colligative properties of boiling point change or freezing point change, we can use osmotic pressure to measure things like the molar masses of the unknown solute that might be inside of our bulb system here. All right, so um, osmosis is, is a fairly common phenomenon. You, you see it in biological systems. You can think about cell structures, right? If you take a cell and you put it in a salt solution, that cell is going to shrivel up because water is going to leave the cell um, and go into the surrounding salt solution. All right, so there are actually some, some real biological applications to something like osmotic pressure. All right, so next video, perhaps I'll do a sample problem, but that is, in a nutshell, uh, the way to think about osmotic pressure.